We have several people even joining from home. So even if you can't come on Thursday nights, that's totally fine. Um, I have the materials for you and you can let me know. I can mail them to you and you can join us from your house. We're gonna end with this um, mystery mosaic. So you'll get a little piece of paper. It's actually a little smaller than I anticipated. <laughs> it's about this big. And so each time, each session, you'll be coloring on it a little bit. And by the end of the sessions, um, we'll be putting it all together to see what the picture will be. Um, and a really exciting thing is happening this week is our block party on Friday from six, no, six to nine. I can't remember if it's five or six. Six to nine, we have tons of stuff. If you have poked your head in the office lately, it's like the planning has taken over like a whole wall of the office. It's going to be amazing. Um, we're going to have tons of, excuse me, food, tons of activities. Um, Uncle Bill is helping us with some pony rides, so that'll be fun. And we have Shea bikes, we have all kinds of things. So we even have some extra flyers over here by this door. So if you know about the um, block party, but you want a neighbor or a friend or whatever, to know about it, please feel free to take a flyer or two. That's this Friday. And um, we are always open to some volunteers helping too. So see Dylan or Emma if you have um, some extra time on Friday to help. Uh, this is a, about two or three weeks away, but something you can put on your calendar. We have a baptism service coming up in September on the 18th. And now is a great time to talk to Pastor Mark and say, I'm interested in being baptized, or I want to know what that is. Now's a good time to learn about it, to hear about it, and we'd love to include you at our baptism service. I think that's all of my announcements, so I'm going to hand it back over to the band.
But um, if you want, we can do that after. But before we pray over, we just wanted to share some words. So I can share a few words from Justin and he did share after. Um, so praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Justin, Ooh. he been with us sophomore year, what you know, sophomore year. Um, Justin and Jason started coming to Pupinas. And um, you know, we found out Brother Justin is musically talented, Brother. <laughs> in all instruments. <laughs> um, but he played a bass, so Justin he played a bass, the ukulele, the piano, bass, ukulele, piano, drums. Anything else that you think about? Okay. And, and Justin, he record music too. So God has gifted Justin with um, his gifts, his talents, and it's been a blessing to see Justin use his gifts for God. You know, Justin come, he played for youth, for our youth band, and then even, even for our band, you know, bass, you know, if I let him know ahead of time, <laughs> then Justin is down to play bass. Yeah. Um, so it's been a blessing to see Justin use his gifts for God and to see Justin grow in his relationship with God. Justin, Justin, he is a truthful person. That's what I see in Justin. Honest person. He will tell you straight. <laughs> or honest mind. That's good, but praise the Lord. We get people in our lives that can remind us to be honest. Um, but uh, so it's been awesome to see Justin grow and um, in his in his faith, in his love for Christ, his love for his brothers and sisters. And I I am also blessed to play here, but also play on the mission. Play also on the mission trip. Justin is our base guy on the mission trip. Carry the base wherever we go. Um, and you know, base say if you know anybody play base. Take a lot on your fingers, bro. You know, you gotta have strong fingers. You gotta, and, then we, and especially on the mission trips, we playing like all the time. So, but just said he was willing to give of his talent, his fingers for the Lord to bless others. And, uh, so I just wanted to share some words for you, bro. Um, when you head off to Point Loma, remember this: keep being honest, bro. Keep being true. Keep being kind and loving. Uh, also, keep your heart open. Keep your heart open for God, but also for new relationships you're gonna make, God. Because you're gonna make you gonna friendly brother, God. You're gonna make friendly friends, God. And that's good. Because those friends and all people you're gonna meet gonna just you're gonna find peace. But you're not, you're not you know, you you're from Hawaii going all the way over there. You know, it's a different area, different place. But those relationships will remind you not only God is with you, though. Um, and you know, we're going to see you in October. Come around. If you can find me, I know you. You can hide, he said. <laughs> but be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be not in with all your heart. Live by faith, not by sight. Be thankful always, God. And live life, I enjoy every moment. Your time, God, and God. And uh, I pray God bless you in every way, God. In every way, just fully in, in your study, whatever, God. May God bless you, okay? I'm going to miss you, God. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Love you, God. Mm -hmm. uh, could you grab the latest word? Mm -hmm. Six mission trips, which is also really cool to me to hear, which is, is that a record? so awesome. Um, when I met Dylan six years ago, I never really knew how much of an impact he would have on my life. Um, we were in Colfax, and I didn't know. And since the, 
Excuse me. Since then, he's had a really big impact on me. Um, Dylan is always the first guy to jump in and help with whatever we need. He's kind to everyone, and he doesn't just brush over the younger youth that look up to him so much. So kind to everyone. He's so talented in so many ways. In singing, at photography, at onstage acting, and making the absolute worst puns ever. <laughs> so good. Dylan is honest, and I, I really love that about him too, and keep that. You know, um, on the mission trip, uh, he's so honest, he came up to me and he said, Dylan, you look so tired. And I appreciate that honesty. Dylan, I look up to you so much, and I am proud that in the five or six years that I've got to know you, I'm glad to say that you're not only just one of my youth, but one of my friends and my brother. Dylan, you have big things ahead of you. So stay close to Jesus and you always go far. So it's awesome. Morning, church. Morning. So we're so uh, blessed to have these young men, and um, we want to support them. They're Ohana, and uh, we've watched them grow up in Pukenaz, and what a blessing. We're going to, uh, we hate to see you guys go, but we're excited about the future that God has for you guys. And so church, uh, we've always been generous. We're going to um, give them cards or whatever. If you want to give them anything, if you want to, uh, we're going to take a love offering along with our regular offering. If you want to give them a love offering and you want to write a check, just write it. Uh, check to Pukin Az and say who it's for, and then Pukin Az will write them a check uh, later this today after uh, service is over. Um, we're so grateful for everybody that's here, and uh, all of you had a, a hand in uh, the lives of these young men, and it's going to continue. You guys will be back, and uh, we don't want them to go over there and forget us, but uh, we're going to support them no matter what happens. We, we love them, and we are excited to see how God uses them. Let's uh, bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you're a good God that uh, sends people to us that we can uh, help uh, walk, walk in your ways, that we can uh, make disciples of, that we can encourage, that we can witness uh, your growth in them as they become young followers of Jesus. Lord, we just ask that you bless them, uh, bless the path that they're on. We know there's going to be some uh, homesickness, some hardships, some trials, but we know that they know that you're with them. And help us as a church family to continue to remember them and reach out to them and support them. Lord, we're so grateful for them. And I'm so grateful for this church that we're so generous, loving church. Lord, I just ask that... Um, you bless everybody here today and help them to just uh, be able to give all that they can give to support these two uh, young men as they go on into their college life. But Lord, we just praise you. We give you all the glory. In your heavenly name, amen. amen. amen.
is uh, giving some late Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, now I'm giving these to uh, our visitors. Hello, welcome you guys. Welcome to uh, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. What is, it, what is your guys' name? Suzanne. Kim. Oh, okay. Suzanne, Kim. Yeah, Kim. We're Tyson's. Tyson's. Oh, praise the Lord. Welcome. And then, what is your name, brother? Chris. Chris. Chris and Ron. And Ron. Right on. Praise the Lord. So church, hey, make sure we aloha, aloha, say aloha, after and stuff. Um, but welcome you guys. Thanks for joining. Suzanne, uh-huh. Suzanne, what's your name? Sorry, Ken. 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 Don't be afraid. 
He said, do not be afraid. He loves me, he loves you, he loves our neighbors, he loves our enemies. He loved the poor. He loved everybody. Even thy stranger. Even the homeless. And he also said, and drink. Verse 38. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. I believe. I always believe. When I became a member at my old church, I was involved in my youth. I became a member, I was baptized. I knew already that's what my cat was going to be. That Jesus is the way, He's the truth, eternal life. And he's so simple. You just have to study his words and shine that light, the spiritual truths. Be honest. Be kind. Loving. And self-control. You find yourself going crazy. That's our nature. And he still love us now. But we hold on to that. We ask for forgiveness right there and then. Oh, Jesus, we really don't need to even think about that or whatever. Approach it. Don't be afraid. Because he's there. You have to ask, you know. Ask and he will answer you. Seek and he will tell you. Knock on the door. Don't be afraid. Life is too short, too precious. Just rejoice. By the time you woke up this morning, rejoice like, because you're a top star with him, put him first. That he could show you the way. Cool. Today we have a lot of people here. Thank you, Jesus. There's a reason why, I know God knows, but I know. There's a love you have in your heart. You want to seek him, want to know his word. Especially, you know, we have a guest too. <coughs> we have our leader that can comfort us too whenever we need a word, physically or spiritually. Okay. I just want to say this again. Whoever believes in me, this is what Jesus said. As the scriptures have said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Yes. You know, just want to share. When I get things come to my way, okay, so I won't miss it. I take a deep breath. I would say my peace might not be good, but I would say my peace and then I'll always end it with love. Because I don't want to be stained. I don't want to stay in my heart. My heart is for Jesus. And it can happen to you too. You know? All right. I also found more. Uh, Just want to share, yeah, I thought about three topics. I see a 55. I know I'll mark it. <laughs> I see a 55. As it reads, so the title is Invitation to the Thirsty. Come all who are thirsty, come to the waters and who and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread 
and your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good. And your soul will delight in riches of air. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to you. And this is an idea. How awesome is that? An invitation to the thirst. Let us come to him. Let us come to him. All right, next. Joel. Joel, chapter 2, 28. The day of the Lord. That's my title. Verse 28. As it reads, and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream. Your young men will, will see vision. Awesome, yeah? God's word is true. Just remember, when you read his words, it's all about spiritual. But it happened on the physical, but it's the spiritual. Because that's where we're going to go. If you believe you're going to go to eternal life, that's where you're going to go. That's where we're going to go. And it's so true. Believe. Okay, one more. John 12.
pray for her. And Uncle Bill Thoman, you guys uh, may or may not know, but he fell and had a brain bleed. And I talked to him yesterday, and he's struggling. So you're gonna, I'm gonna anoint you twice. And then um, we're gonna have Sarah Shed come up. Um, Sarah was is deployed today to go. I'm not sure where. Indianapolis. Indianapolis. And so we want to pray for her, anoint her, and pray for her safety. Brother Ron, you want me to anoint you, brother? He, Ron, Ron's a friend of mine. He came over on uh, Friday, um, had some crazy stuff going. I prayed for him Friday night. I told him to come to church today. Praise the Lord, he came. Uh, God brought you here. So come on up, and I'm going to pray for you and um, as well. And then I'm going to introduce Dennis. Or turn it over to Dennis. So we know that God's word tells us to pray. Pray for each other, no matter what it's for, for healing, for encouragement, uh, no matter what it is, it's God's word tells us to come together and pray. And uh, we believe in healing as the church of Nazarene. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And his word also tells us to come and pray for healing. And so we're going to uh, pray for um, these dear saints of ours. Auntie Linda, you know, just lost Manny. Uh, not very long ago, and now she's got some illness and uh, just can't can't get over it. Uh, hasn't been able to shake it, and I, she's watching today, I believe, on online. Um, and Uncle Bill, like I said, he uh, he uh, has some brain a brain injury. Um, and Ron uh, here, there's you know there's always spiritual battle around us, and that's what he was experiencing Friday. And we're so grateful God brought him here. And I was able to pray for him, and I told him to come, and we pray for that as well. So let's uh, bow our heads and pray. You guys, if you want to come up, you can, or you can reach your hands out if you want to pray in agreement. Uh, Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We're so grateful that you're a loving God, an active God who's um, interested in our life, every aspect of our life. Uh, we recognize that you're creator God, that you, all things are possible for you. And we come together as a, a church body, believing in you and in the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit. Lord, and I just thank you for Andy Linda, who's been through so much, and uh, for the whole Bowman family, and Brother Ty, he's been through just as much. And I'm so grateful that he's here to stand in today for um, Andy Linda. And we just ask, Lord, that you be with her. Encourage her, Lord, and uh, surround her with your peace, your shalom. Lord, she just needs you. I just I just ask that you help her to get the rest that she needs to heal. Lord, I just anoint Ty in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit um, and ask for that you just touch her body and restore it. Lord, well, this uh, illness that she has, we just ask that you take it away from her. And we know you can with just a thought. And we praise you for that. And we trust you. And we cry out to you. And Lord, once again, I, I thank you for Ty and his... Uh, service to his family and to the church and to so many people. I just ask, Lord, that you bless him as he stands in for Uncle Bill, who we all love. Uh, Bill's struggling. He has terrible headaches. You know all about that, Lord. You're with him. You've been with him every minute of the day. And Lord, I just ask that um, you just continue to touch his body. Help the doctors know how to treat him and just help him to heal. Lord, I just uh, anoint Ty in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for Bill. And uh, we claim healing in Jesus' name, his powerful name. And Lord, we know there's no power in the oil. The power is all in the Spirit, all in you. We just trust you to touch Bill. Help us as a body to remember to uh, reach out uh, and encourage both Bill and Linda and, and that really everybody here. Help us to always reach out, always think of others. And Lord, I just thank you for my brother Ron, Lord. I'm so grateful that you brought him here to Book and Ass. What a blessing he is to us, his brother. Lord, he, he, he knows that he needs you. And he desires that relationship. And we understand that there's spiritual warfare happening all around us and we can't even see it. We need you to protect us. Your word tells us to put on the spiritual armor, Lord. And I just pray that you just clothe Ron in the spiritual armor. I just pray a covering over him and ask you to surround him with angels. Lord, we're so grateful for him. I anoint him um, with oil in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and ask that you just touch his, uh, touch his life in a miraculous way. 
Continue to bless him. Thank you for the blessing that he is to us. And Heavenly Father, I just lift up Sarah to you. We're so grateful for Sarah and her family, Lord. Uh, they love you, and we're so grateful that you brought them here. And we know this is, uh, it's so hard whenever we, whenever someone gets deployed. Such a hardship on, on the family, as well as on the individual. And Sarah is a trooper. She, she's gone so many places, Lord, and her family suffers when she's gone. We're so grateful for her life, Lord, and I just anoint her with oil. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I ask that you protect her, Lord. Keep her safe as she travels to Indianapolis. Be with her family, Lord, and we just ask that you um, help them through this time uh, of absence. And we know that you'll be with Sarah, you'll be with her family, and help us as a body to remember them, to reach out to them, let them know that we love them. Lord, we just give you all the glory, and we just ask that you be in the rest of this service. And bless this service, Lord. Bless Brother Dennis as he brings us uh, this message today. Uh, we, we love you. We give you all the glory in your heavenly name. Amen. 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 So I'm going to have um, Brother Dennis come up. Dennis is from Oahu, from Windward Church of the Nazarene. <laughs> and... Um, We uh, we love Dennis. God God put a a ministry on his heart, a call to ministry, and um, it's a unique ministry and it's an amazing ministry. And he's going to share with us about it today. And he is faithful to that call. He maybe didn't feel uh, qualified, but God calls the unqualified and qualifies them. And did I said that right. Uh, but Dennis is faithful to God, to that call, and he's here to share with us today. Do you want this um, pulpit? Let's move it forward a little bit. All right, Brother Dennis. Yes. Can everybody hear me? Yes. You can raise your hand. Um. So you gotta excuse me if I get nervous. I tend to pick on people in the crowd. Okay. I don't even know Chris. So sorry. Um, my name is Dennis. This is the wrong thing. This is from last week. No. Uh, I am from Winter Church in Nazarene. Uh, I wanted to thank Pastor Mark, Pastor Jamie for inviting me over to share. Um, we had a good dinner and talk last night, and so I share with you. Your church is a pretty darn amazing church. Uh, I didn't talk to many pastors on our district, but uh, a few I have. Pukanaz is very special. So I'm here to share my testimony a bit, you know, share some pictures, tell you guys about the water project. Uh, and I, I think my testimony is important because, um, for one, it, for me, like, you know when you talk to people, when people tell you they feel God is putting this on your heart or whatnot, I, I feel that too. But, like, this particular thing, uh, God talks to me differently, like in things happening in my life, things that, you know, you, you reflect on anything, that's just too coincidental to be just coincidence. So uh, I'm sorry, I don't want my, my testimony kind of long. If you have to leave, that's fine. If you fall asleep, I can see each one of you. But it's fine. I'm totally fine if you fall asleep. Good time. Um, so my testimony is I, I came to Christ, or I started going to church in my early 40s. Uh, I didn't know God. I didn't really want to know God. I didn't have any interest. But um, my my daughter started going to church because my mom went to church. And uh, one day my my mother in law came over and she was talking to me and my wife and uh, she asked, "Do you guys think you will go to heaven?" And I, I gave my mother on a typical uh, non Christian answer, which was, "I think so. And I think we're pretty good. I think we'll go to heaven." And she told me, "Well." You know, who's good? Because different people have different definitions of good. And she said, um, it's her for the Christian belief. And I might be wrong. So she told me that where sin is, God can be. And everybody sins. So the only way to get to heaven is if you believe in Jesus and you resolve to your sin and you get to heaven. And my thought was, you know, my, my girls are going to church. They're going to go to heaven. I want to be there to greet them, you know. 
And um, so I was hoping my wife would want to go because uh, my wife's parents, my mother-in-law was Christian, but her husband wasn't. And there was, there was some friction there. So I didn't want to push. But very shortly after that, my wife asked if uh, we could go to church. And I was like, yes, let's go. And uh, I remember a, a solid month I was sitting in church, so uncomfortable. I, I, people knew what to sing. I got into, these are new songs. I, I like the songs. I like the songs a lot. But um, when I first started, I didn't know any books in the Bible, and verses. And everybody seemed to know everything. They know each other. They do the songs. More than anything, I, I wanted to know what what this Bible was, what was Christianity. Um, so I think it was, I know it was January 1st. I think it was the first January 1st after I started going to church. I tried to read the Bible in a year. How many of you like to read? You guys are weird. No, I'm not kidding. I can't, I, I'm, I'm a horrible reader. So um, it was really tough reading a Bible in a year. Uh, I'm a tennis player, so my, my idea of reading was getting my monthly tennis magazine and looking at the pictures of, oh yeah, I read the magazine. That, that was my reading. Uh, but to, to do this reading, you know, I, I didn't read any tennis magazine for about nine months. So my story was on September 30th, 2007. Pastor Tim Cruz, who knows Pastor Tim Cruz? Pastor Tim Cruz gave a message of the rich young ruler. Uh, so many people know it, I like to just say it, but uh, what I remember was um, rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, what do I have to do to get help? Jesus said, follow the commandments. Rich young ruler said, I do, what else do I do? And Jesus smiled and told him, you want to be perfect, so all your possessions give it to the poor, restore treasures in heaven and come follow me. And sitting in church, um, Pastor Tim had already outlined that if you have a roof over your head, you have electricity, and say a refrigerator, some, some things that we take for granted, that you're like in the top 15% of people in the world. And I didn't realize before that the level of poverty in the world. And at that same moment, you know, I was just sitting, sitting at church, I realized that very day, September 30th, was like an end of a quarter, and the year before, I had signed something at work that on that very day, I qualified for a half year's bonus. So now I'm, I'm age 41, 42, and my wife and I have never really saved up really well. There's a lot of bills, the mortgage, the, uh, you know, that day I realized, you know, Pastor Tim was right, we are rich, right? but for us, all of a sudden, we wouldn't have to worry so much about finances. And I forgot to say this at the last church. Actually, the next day, my wife told me that her mother-in-law, her mom, my mother-in-law, had gifted us ten thousand dollars, all on this time. And uh, so I knew that later. But then at church, I was thinking, okay, am I supposed to do something about this? Because you know we are kind of rich now. Uh, but what for? And. Um, Again, just sitting and contemplating and asking God, is this something you, know, you want me to do? I realized that, that the week before, I got the September 2007 magazine of Tennis, tennis Magazine. On the cover was my favorite female player, Anna Ivanovich, I almost forgot her name. But um, I opened the magazine, and she's pretty. But, um, there's the normal things in the tennis magazine, how to get a forehand, where to take a, take a vacation. Um, but at the back, there's this weird picture. It was just a picture of three young African children kneeling next to a shoe. It was a story of a former tennis professional who started something called the Global Water Foundation. So I thought, man, okay, this is, this is really weird coincidence. You know, I've never seen an article like that. I didn't pick up the magazine in nine months. Um, but God, if this is something you want me to do, you're going to have to work on my wife because are there any Chinese people here? I don't want to insult anybody, but you know, locally we joke that Chinese people are very tiny with their money. My wife would say, <laughs> and that's, that's true, but um, you know, I, I was, you know, I was praying to God, you know, God, this is what you want me to do. You need to work on my wife because um, I felt strongly like this 401k that was sitting that maybe I should give that away. 
So I went to the altar and um, to this day, so we've been Christians now for about 15, 16 years. To this day, my wife has gone up maybe two times. And that one time after praying, I stood up and she was laying hands on me. And I started bawling and my daughter looked at me and said, Dad, are you okay? And I said, I don't know. Um, went outside and talked to my wife. And, uh, like, I tore all this stuff and she's just really taking me in and being real quiet. Um, I don't know how many husbands and wives are here, but with my wife, if she doesn't say no, if it's just silence, that's a yes for me. <laughs> so she didn't say anything. Um, I figured she might not want to upset God if this is really a God thing. So, so that's when it started. And um, little side note, part of the reason why we didn't do too well financially was I was addicted to um, trading cards. I know that sounds horrible. Um, but trading cards can, can be very expensive. I even hit purchases from it. That was bad. And she was shocked that uh, the supposedly honest husband had been doing this. And, uh, but for, and I, I tried so hard to stop. And I kept asking pastors, is it a sin to buy baseball cards? And my pastors never really would tell me. I think if you do it in a responsible way, it's fine. But I wasn't very responsible. And it was like, it was an addiction. But from that very day, you know, my whole thoughts were consumed with, you know, this is what God wants me to do. And I started researching about the clean water problem in the world, how there was 1.1 billion people in the world without access to clean water, which at the time was like one out of every six people. So that would be like probably five of a year, six people wouldn't have access to clean water. You would have to go to the stream, use water that could get you sick. Um, people were dying of like, diarrhea. There's no medication in a lot of places in the world. Um, so that's how the uh, water project started. We started doing a, a fundraiser every year from 2007 to 2009. We gave funds to Haiti. Um, well, I'm sorry, not 2007 to 2009. 2009 to 2011. Um, I skipped something. So past, that same Pastor Tim in 2009 said he wanted, he felt God wanted him to help me start a fundraiser. And that's when the whole water project started. Uh, 2009 to 2011, we raised enough for, to fund one well in Haiti for three years. Uh, but at that time, our church, not the entire church, but I was approached a few times asking, hey, do you know where the wells are? And I had to tell them no, because um, we just need the fund and they just dig the well wherever there's need. So that's fine, but um, around the same time, there's a famine in the heart of Africa. And I was asking God, you know, just praying, is this something you want us to move to, to get involved in? So our then pastor, Jerry Appleby, put me in contact with a guy, put me in contact with a Nazarene a leader in West Africa. And uh, his name was John. So John told me of a need in a country called Burkina Faso. Who knows where Burkina, Burkina Faso is? <laughs> I have a feeling you might know Burkina Faso better than me because it's weird. <laughs> well, I did because when we when you did your deal in April, oh. I, I, that's the reason why. <laughs> oh, okay. Because there's so many connection points that actually dug wells in Burkina Faso back in the when, in the 70s. So that was really neat. Um, and I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sure John. John, okay, sorry, John. So this is all part of the kind of cool part. So John told me about a need in Burkina Faso. And around this, I think within the same week, you know, I was still praying. I, I, I looked for confirmation somewhere, you know. So I was praying and praying and nothing was happening. I got an email from a guy named Larry. Larry Siegel from a small nonprofit called Safe Water International. So between 2007 and 2009, I, when I was researching clean water, I, I would donate to small nonprofits. So Larry's nonprofit was the first one I donated to. He randomly, but I gained enough that I was on his mailing list. So I wasn't singled out, but uh, I got an email from Larry that his wife had been moved to Akragana. So I looked it up and I thought, hey, wait a minute, Akragana and Burkina Faso are next door. Is this a sign, or is this what you want me to do? And within that same week, John emailed again and said, well, even though I told you there's a need in Burkina Faso, my, my wife and I live in Akra Ghana. So, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. That's some 
pretty heavy coincidence. So I, I went home that night. Um, we had a couple summer interns, and uh, we're sitting around the table. I tell my story, and one of the interns, this guy named Kristen Grani, as I told the story, her eyes got big, bigger. And she said, No way. And she went upstairs, got her laptop. I think she was at Point Loma. And she said, During the spring semester, they had a group um, assignment. They had to create a, a fake nonprofit for any country in Africa, which has the most unique, um, independent countries of any continent, and any charity. So it could be family. It could be uh, AIDS, it could be trafficking. But she, she showed her, uh, she showed me her laptop and it was live well, love wells. And it was clean water wells in Africa. And when she told me that, I was like, okay, we're moving the water project from Haiti to Burkina Faso. And so that's how we got into Africa. Um, and we did have some struggles. Uh, I was able to visit in 2013, and I saw the three wells that were starting. They were basically just holes in the ground, you know, 100 feet deep. Um, but after that visit and sharing at the district assembly, that was the first time a number of other churches got involved, and we raised, I think it was 38000 the next year. Um, I think the impact of hearing the stories were so impactful. Um, but when we tried to do 10 more wells the next year, we had some issues. I, I think it was a culture thing, and I think it was my inexperience, but I asked the leader there, uh, they had asked for $4,500 per well, and we ended up sending 18000 to Mali for three wells. So we had only 20 of them. And I asked him, can you make this happen? With 20000 can you dig 10 wells? And he did. But I think it was a culture thing where he didn't want to tell me I can't do it correctly or I can't do it do it well. So uh, we had a number of failures. Uh, we rehabbed some by just drilling wells. Uh, but that's the reality of what happened there. And uh, there was there was a trust issue for me with the new uh, person in charge. I just couldn't communicate about some pictures I got, so I felt uncomfortable. So we moved it to uh, start working with a guy named Cosmos Mutal, who was in charge of all of the African uh, Nazarene Compassion Ministries for the entire African region, and he was in charge of doing all the wells for the Nazarene Church. So since then, we've done wells in Malawi. I think we have about three, three or four. We have about three or four in Zambia. We have a well, one well in Zimbabwe, East Rotini, and I think our next one is scheduled for Senate. Uh, so I think right now, we're going to show some pictures. Oh, what's up? Wait. So this is a well Burkina Faso. So it's literally just fuck it and roll, pull it up. And when they're digging this, it's kind of, I don't think you can see it from the picture, but they just toss the, take the same bucket, fill it with rocks, throw it out. So usually there's like a big mile of dirt and rocks around it. Next picture. I think this is actually a rehab well in Burkina Faso. So when we went back in, we drilled a few. Next. I can't remember, I think it's in Malawi, but I asked them to put in a sign. So it's kind of cool if you're ever in Africa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see the sign um, that you know, our, our district actually put in a well. Next. I don't know if you guys can read this, but this well was put in fully by a particular member of Okolaki Nazarene. And uh, the last time I spoke here, I was shocked with the generosity. Not only of the church, I mean, in your church, it's not the biggest church. And uh, Pastor Martin told me, I think after I left, that $1,000 came in, which I thought was amazing. And then he called me on Monday and said, uh, Bruce Raver is going to give. Nine thousand, and he was looking for more money to get. So he ended up getting twelve thousand uh, dollars. Next, I think this is still Malawi. I'm not sure. So you can see all the buckets and whatnot. I was told a five-gallon bucket weighs. Uh, no, it's wrong. I think it was a gallon weighing about eight pounds. Next. This is a water well in Zambia. 
So there's a, the way they do it is Jamia, the water is pumped into a tank that's right behind, I think this is a pastor. And also we have a school that we're helping to rebuild that's very, very close to this. And the way that turned out was there was some extra money from the water well, and the DS there asked um, if, we could, if, if they could use the funds to help finish off the school. So we sent money for like doors and windows, but what happened was the structure wasn't built really good, so it all, um, was destroyed in a bad storm, so we're fully funding the rebuild of the school, uh, and it's actually in progress right now. Next, I oh gosh, this is either Zambia or Isotini. So it doesn't look as dramatic, but I mean it's probably better. You don't have to pump it on that. You just run it directly to a spigot. I think this one also has a water tank that does pumps the water tank and then gravity to the to the pipes. Next. So this is in front of the school before it was destroyed. The man in front is Brother Francis Watsa. Uh, it's kind of cool with technology nowadays. You can uh, talk on WhatsApp. And our fundraiser is desperately trying to get them. And I got a hold of him, but it's hard to put a mic to my phone for him to hear anything. But he's very grateful for all the help. These are some of the 400 some odd kids that attend the school. Next. Is there a video too? Yes. Yeah, I can show the video. I guess. My name is Simon Kasongo. I want to thank you for all the development that we are seeing to this community. I am the community head man in this area. We want to find the wind was church of the Nazareth. Thank you so much for the school which is under construction because we used to suffer a lot. Children were living under the trees. We want to thank you for this development to this community area. Thank you so much for the boho that we received. Yeah, we have the boho and we want to thank God for the provision of the boho. We want also to thank the Reverend Francis Mwansa for he is our leader who is representing us. He is the one who is representing and we are seeing things are moving about there in a good way. We want to thank you so much for your heart. Please continue, continue to do great works. We are praying to God that may the good Lord open more doors so that they can be more classroom blocks to accommodate all the children. So, so, so that children can have a good learning environment. And the Thank you so much. My name is So, just want to share it. All he knows is my name and Winter Church. So, it's really all the churches that give that helps these yeah. uh, projects happen. Um, so, I just want to mention some of the reasons why the water is so important. So, if you can imagine um, kids having to walk a long time, it's uh, usually the women and children's job to get water. Uh, what happens is there can be physical attacks, either it's rare with animals, but I think also like human predators, like guys, you know, evil guys. Um, there's time lost away from getting the water so they don't have time to get a good education. You know, like imagine if you have to go to school, but school is from like 8 to 2 and you only get there at 11 every day. Um, uh, this is just a story I heard. I didn't ask people in Burkina Faso about it, but I was the story I read was a lot of kids are not named until they're five years old because there's so many kids that die before five. Uh, they wait until they get, get to that age and they'll leave them unnamed. Uh, 
few other stories I wanted to share. I got to just address some leaders and play with some little kids uh, on my first trip. I took pencils because I thought they're small, they can use them to write and whatnot, but really all I did was I gave them sticks because there was no desks, there's no paper. The way they learn is just a chalkboard and they just watch. Uh, but while I was there, I noticed there's like a table, kind of like our tables here, and it's just kind of a little layer of beans. And I asked them, what is that? And basically, that was that the family's food for at least a month or two until the rainy season came and they could grow more things. So, you know, it, it's hard when you, when you go someplace like that and you see this, it's hard like, to not think about that. Every time I walk into like a food lab, or any time I go to dinner, I'm looking at Spanish menu. I'm thinking, wow, well, what am I gonna eat? I, I can get this cool big panini. But like, my brothers and sisters, it's beans. And, I can only relate the stories that I was told. I asked them, like, so what happens if you run out? And they Some have mics, but still the distance you have to travel is just crazy. Um, so putting the water in place closer with uh, and just the story I wanted to relate was these are like little children. So, every call here, I need a visual. I like the embarrassment. Wow, you're tall. Yeah. She's taller than that. She's getting stretched out of it. Yeah. So, no, wait, lower. Okay. <laughs> so, you guys are a little child. Shorter than every, tinier than every. And we went to lunch. And Okay, so I, I didn't eat lunch anywhere because I was paranoid about having to use the bathroom there. Because basically, when we went on trips, the bus would stop, and there's just an open field, and guys would go use the bathroom out there. And it was weird because I guess it's cultural, but everybody in the bus looked like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we had lunch, not in memory, but I can't remember the cow's name. But they served there this mild, I mean, this huge plate, like bigger than what we ate last night. A mound of like potatoes and some chicken in it. And this tiny girl devoured the whole plate. Because I think that's just not, you know, that was just for her, it was incredible to have that food. And this other boy visited, um, there was no um, open market or something. I wanted to buy him something. So we went to just a, a store. And I, he just had this dazed look. He just had his arms open and he just kept hiding things on his arms to give to his family. But the overriding thought in my head was that every refrigerated thing we gave them, like milk, they have to drink it that day. They don't have refrigerators or electricity. But uh, it's just just such a different life. Um, okay, so I'm almost done. I'm sorry. Thank you for staying awake. If you're still awake, if you're sleeping with your eyes open, that's amazing. I wish you teach me how to do that. Um, so I just want to share this is just my story. But I feel very strongly every person here has a story to be told. Uh, for me, it really was being intentional about listening for God, seeking God. And I, I got to admit, recently, it's been, I haven't been that good at it. But I think, I, I know this church is very much in tune with God. I don't know how active people are in everything, but it can be, the most tiring thing in the world to serve, but I think it's, it can be also at the same time as tired as you get, there's a fulfillment you get in serving God that it's, it's just it's the best. You know, when, when I when I started going to church, I thought in my mind, I think this might happen to people as they get older. You wonder like, what is my life about? Um, and uh, I was listening to Pastor Tim saying Pastor Tim Cruz last week. 
of the Vallejo. And he ended his service, but I just got that. He just said, you know, what do you want to be remembered for? And uh, yeah, I thought about that. There's just things, you know, people do things and serve, and that's great. But um, I can't remember the scripture, but it was part of a song, and it surprised me that it's actually very, very scriptural. It goes something like, if you give to the poor and you die a martyr, but you don't have love, it's just, it has some old value. So that, that's part of my story. I, I, I'm always conscious of doing this for God, giving God the glory. Because I remember being in Burkina Faso the first time, thinking, what in the heck am I doing here? I'm on the other side of the world. I don't know anybody. I don't speak the language. But if you're obedient to God, this ministry to the belief of other churches, other supporters has raised over like $130,000, uh, 20 Four twenty-five wells have gone in. More than likely, thirty to forty thousand people have cleaned water because of these efforts. And it's all just—it's it's all God answering the prayer. I kept asking, "What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do?" And it's—it's it's a blessing to be a part of. It's a blessing to have the support of such a great church. Um, lastly, the. Uh, just words of encouragement for the church as a whole, maybe not individually, but I'm not blowing smoke when I say this is an amazing church. Uh, I just hope you guys keep it up. Share what you guys do with the rest of the district. Our district needs the spirit that this church has. And I had one last thing, sorry. I thought about it on the scripture. So we're a church that's so active in serving and loving. There's a scripture in Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Thank you, everybody. We're going to have the, the youth come back up. And before we close in a song, I just, why water wells? Because people need water to live. No water, you don't live. And people are dying. And when we supply a well, it impacts so many people. And we can tell them this is from Jesus because he loved you. We literally can share Jesus because of the water, the clean water that flows from the pipes. And they're receptive to that because they have seen their families die because they didn't have water. And that's why we support this ministry. And so in a minute, we're going to take a love offering um, for this ministry. And Pukanaz has always supported it well. And if you want to give to this um, ministry, um, if you want to write a check, just uh, write it to Pukanaz and write water walls. And we'll make sure that... Uh, and, and there's no, I believe I'm correct saying this, there's no overhead yet. 100% of it goes to the water wells. So there's no overhead. The church doesn't keep any money. The, dist, the African district doesn't. Um, it all goes to drill these water wells. And the, the children there need it. The families there need it. And, uh, I mean, think about that. No water. We are so, so blessed. Um, I probably go through three or four water bottles a day, the little ones. Don't even think about it, that we have so much access to healthy clean water. So let's bow our heads and pray. If you feel led to give, you can give. Uh, just let Jamie uh, Fernandez know or put, a, put it in the offering bowl. There's uh, envelopes over there if you want to. And if you want to need to get it to her later, um, you can do that. Or you can give on uh, PayPal on our our Pukadaz website. We have a Puka, Pukalani Church of the Nazarene.org website. Um, there's a lot of different ways to give. And I just hope that, um, I want to thank Dennis for your faithfulness. And he has one more thing he wants to share. So I forgot to tell everybody, there's a table back there where I have t-shirts, um, some brochures, some CDs. What are those hair things called? Scrunchies. So the scrunchies are from a gal who was a summer intern. 
She runs a anti-sex trafficking nonprofit in South Africa. Um, so the shirts, so the I have stickers. So stickers, CDs, brochures, they're all free. The shirts, I'm asking for like a ten dollar donation. It's just like tax wise, the church has to know if you give and you receive something. It's it's just tax wise, it's different than just a straight donation. So, um, yeah. Okay. There's a donation jar over there. Also, we have um, snacks. If anybody wants, um, make sure you grab some some goodies and coffee and water. So let's uh, bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We, we're so grateful that you bless us so much, Lord. But we also, uh, with that blessing comes responsibility. And we know there's so many people in need. And we know that uh, your word says that to be a generous people, a people that give, that if we hold on to this life and make it our possessions about what our life is about that we end up losing in the end we die in the end lord just help us to be a people that recognize that every good thing comes from you and that you it pleases you when we uh, use those resources to to bless others um, i just thank you for everybody here today lord I, they're all a blessing i pray that covering over them as they enter into, into this week lord uh, be with everybody. Be with those that aren't here, Lord, and just encourage them. Let them know that we love them and help us as a body to reach out to them. Um, I pray traveling mercies for those who are traveling, Lord, and I just ask that you touch those who are ill. And uh, maybe some others are gone for another reason. We don't know why, but we just ask that you be with them. Remind them that you're a good God. We're so grateful for you. Um, we just give you all the glory in your heavenly name. Amen. Yeah.
Thank you. 